Welcome to another GNU Cash Quick Start tutorial. I'm Laura from the BusyBeePost.com. In today's tutorial is a special tutorial. I pulled it together because in the previous tutorial on entering simple and split transactions, I gave an example of how to enter a split expense transaction. And some of the questions I received about the split transaction tutorial leads me to believe that some people are still a little confused about entering a split transaction. In this tutorial, I will be going a little deeper into detail on entering a split expense transaction. Since it is so important that you grasp the understanding of how to enter a split transaction, a simple transaction is pretty easy. A split transaction takes a little getting used to. I will try to address some of the concerns I've gotten and I will point out some things I didn't point out in the previous tutorial for those that may still be struggling with the concept of entering a split expense transaction. Be sure to begin by checking out my first tutorial on entering simple and split transactions to review the difference between the two. If you like my tutorials and find them helpful, please subscribe. It encourages me to keep going with these tutorials. Okay, let's begin. GNU Cash describes a split when money is transferred to or from more than two accounts in a transaction. In this tutorial, I will show you how to enter an expense transaction that has more than one transaction which belongs to different expense accounts in the chart of accounts. Keep in mind, a split transaction allows you to break down a lump sum transaction into various accounts and specify the related chart of accounts the items belong to. For example, I have a receipt from Max Office Supplies. We can call it a receipt, an invoice, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. The total cost of two items purchased came to $70. Here I have this one receipt with two different expenses that belong to two different expense accounts in the chart of accounts. With the checking account register open, the first entry is the date. The next field, NUM, stands for a number. Here you can enter a check or transaction number that relates to this transaction or you can simply leave it blank. In the description field, you can enter the payee. In my example, Max Office Supplies is the payee, so I will enter Max Office Supplies. Next, use the tab key. It's very important that you use the tab key to tab across to the withdrawal field and enter the total amount of the receipt or invoice in the withdrawal field. I entered $70, which is the total cost of the transaction in this example. Next, I will select split on the toolbar. This will automatically insert two additional lines. On the first additional line, the checking account appears in the transfer field and the $70 is repeated in the withdrawal field. Tab across the fields until your cursor lands on the third row. This is where you will begin entering descriptive information about your transaction. In a split transaction, Action describes the type of split, which you can either type in or choose from a pull-down list. Here in the action field, if you click in the field, the drop-down arrow will appear. Click on the drop-down arrow to see the options you have for describing this transaction. Action is an optional field, which you can simply leave blank if you choose to do so. I will select Payment since this transaction is a payment for office supplies. Notice in the memo field that instead of a description, which was what was displayed when I entered the payee, now memo is displayed. Here is where you can enter more descriptive information about the transaction. I will enter in the memo field the first item on my receipt, which is three cartons of copy paper. Next, I will tab over to the transfer field and select Office Supplies from the chart of accounts. Since 
this is the account this expense transaction applies to. The R field has to do with whether or not a transaction has been reconciled, which is something that does not apply to this transaction at this time, since this is a newly entered transaction. The R you see here now is only temporary. As you proceed with the transaction, it will display a N for no, indicating this transaction has not been reconciled. I will continue to tab to the deposit field and enter the cost of the three cartons of copy paper. As you see here, $70 has already been entered by the system, so I will change it to reflect the $45 that actually applies to the purchase of the copy paper. Next, I will use the tab key to scroll across to the end of the row. This will add an additional line which I will use to enter my last item. Again, I will select payment from the action field and in the memo field, I will enter the other item that I purchased with the $70 transaction, postage stamps. I will select the postage and delivery chart of accounts that applies to this part of the transaction. The system has automatically entered the balance left from the $70 transaction, $25, which is the correct cost of the postage stamps I purchased. Since the full list of items and the cost of each item has been entered, I will select Enter on the toolbar to record the changes and then Save to save the changes. Now, as you see here, this split transaction describes a business expense which was paid to Max Office Supplies for payment of three cartons of copy paper, which is an essential office supplies business expense, which costs $45, and so forth. I think you get the idea how the description, action, and memo field are used to describe a split transaction. Now, if I select reports, assets, and liabilities, and then general journal, here I can see the transaction. The description of payee is displayed here, Max Office Supplies, and below I can see the memo description of what I purchased from Max Office Supplies and the chart of accounts the transactions were entered into. Now, when I'm ready to reconcile my GNU Cash Business Checking Account register against my business banking account statement, I can see here in the reconcile window the $70 expense transaction because you know on your banking statement it will show the full amount of the transaction. But I don't have to wonder if I remember what the $70 transaction was for because I can look in the checking account register for the $70 transaction that occurred on 9-5 and know exactly what that business expense was for. And I can clearly give an answer in case of a tax audit of my business records. Hopefully that won't happen, but you never know when it may happen to you. Therefore, you must always be prepared with an answer. The main thing to keep in mind is that entering a split expense transaction will allow you to break down a lump sum transaction and specify the related chart of accounts the items belong to. I hope this tutorial has cleared up any questions you have about entering a split expense transaction. Leave your comments in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to get an update on my next tutorial.